Good morning, children. So today is the twenty-sixth of uh, June, and um, few months back, if you can recall, then we all were at a very different state, isn't it? We all got introduced to something which is called COVID nineteen, a pandemic, and your exams had to stop. It had to be stopped. uh due to the government notifications your results were updated in the internet for the first time perhaps you all could not come to school to collect your results you all got to know that you are promoted to the next level isn't it so these days uh, not the days but these few months has been really 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 challenging for all of us not only as students or not only as teachers but as citizens of this country isn't it we all have really faced tough situations but whatever be the situation we have overcome everything and that too with full confidence if you remember then we began with your classes perhaps just 2 months ago and when we first started we all were really anxious we were not very sure as to what will be the mode of communication with the students it was challenging for us just like you all did not have online classes before in the similar manner we teachers also did not have access to such kind of online education before so it was a tough time it's still a tough time but if you compare that time when we started with the online classes and today then you will see that there is a vast difference when we first began we were as i told you really anxious we didn't know what's going to happen but slowly slowly we all got adjusted to this new situation isn't it and slowly slowly we all started to cope up with all the differences that arise that arise in the society and as far as our education is concerned we got used to the new techniques as well we all began at the very beginning through whatsapp then we switched to google classroom and then we switched to youtube and now we are in zoom and perhaps in all these platforms that i have mentioned and we all are doing really well isn't it me as a teacher and i'm sure all the teachers have learned a lot during this time and i'm sure it is the same with you students as well you all never thought that you will have school away from school you all will get education away from school you all never th thought that before even we never thought that we are going to work in such situations but time and situation teach us everything as they say experience is the best teacher in life so students uh, before starting today's class we are just in the last part of uh, the chapter that we were doing so before starting with today's explanation i would uh, like to thank you all for all your cooperation all these uh, past days because just like it was a challenge for us it was a challenge for you all too but together i'm sure we have learned a lot it was different it was difficult at times but still we all adjusted we all overcame whatever hurdles we faced so students keeping that in mind i would like to thank you for your cooperation all these days and i hope that whatever audios videos notes and uh, zoom sessions whatever i had with you people i hope it has helped you a lot and i hope that it has not made you feel much different from that of the school environment so dear students thanking you all um i would like to also wish you all the best because just after your summer break your pt1 will begin isn't it so all the best for pt1 whatever chapters are being covered till now everything will come for your pt1 okay so all the best and also don't forget to enjoy your summer break and now i am going to share with you the explanation of the topic that is left for completing the chapter as a whole thank you dear students once again and all the best 
Dear students, so far in this chapter we have studied about the constitution making of India and also of South Africa. So through this we understood that a constitution is very necessary for the proper running of a democratic country. And today we will finish off this chapter by studying about the guiding values of our constitution. So these guiding values means the philosophy of our constitution. It means what the constitution consists of. What are the values and ideals that our constitution wants to inculcate in us? That is called as the philosophy. And it is very important to know as students of political science about the underlying philosophy of the Indian constitution. So we can understand the philosophy of a constitution in two ways. The first way is by reading the views of the major leaders of making the constitution. So when we talk about or when we read about the um, discussions about the views of the various leaders who were responsible for making the constitution, then we can understand the philosophy behind which they were working. The other way is by reading the constitution by our own selves. So when we read the constitution on our own, we will definitely be in a position to understand the overall philosophy of our constitution. So first of all, let us try to understand the various views of our leaders of India who were responsible for the constitution. And through this, let us try to understand the underlying philosophy behind it. So the dream and the promise. So, if I take you back to the pages of this chapter, then you will see that there are the pictures of various leaders of our constituent assembly, starting from Vallabhai Patel to Abdul Kalam Azad to T.T. Krishna Machari and then Rajendra Prasad, Jaipal Singh, uh, H.C. Mukherjee and um, Durga Bhai Deshmukh, um, so many were there. So, among these names, I'm sure you must be thinking that why is the name of Mahatma Gandhi not there? He is the father of the nation after all. Well, students, although Mahatma Gandhi was the father of the nation, but he was not a member of the Constituent Assembly. But his charisma or his philosophy influenced our Constituent Assembly leaders so much that they tried to incorporate the ideals of Mahatma Gandhi in the constitution. So many years ago in 1931, in the magazine Young India, Mahatma Gandhi wrote how he wanted the constitution to look like, what he wanted to be incorporated inside the constitution when it was made. So let us go to the views of Mahatma Gandhi. So Mahatma Gandhi wrote these lines. I shall strive for a constitution which will release India from all thraldom and patronage. That means he wanted India free from all, free from any outside force. I shall work for an India in which the poorest shall feel that it is their country in whose making they have an effective voice. An India in which there shall be no high class and low class of people. An India in which all communities shall live in perfect harmony. There can be no room in such an India for the curse of untouchability or the curse of intoxicating drinks and drugs. Women will enjoy the same rights as men. I shall be satisfied with nothing else. So when you go through these lines by Mahatma Gandhi, I am sure you are very clear about what is written. Because whatever he wrote, it was for the common people and it was written in very simple language. So in all these lines, if you go through, then you will see that Gandhiji spoke mostly about freedom and equality. He dreamt of an India where there will be equality of people, no low class, no high class. There will be no curse of untouchability. Even the women who were not given equal position in the society will have the same rights as men. So Gandhiji clearly dreamt of India which is going to be free from any external force and also which is going to be equal. So this dream of Mahatma Gandhi was shared by another important person. In fact, the key person of the Indian constitution whose name is Dr. B.R. Ambedkar.
So B. R. Ambedkar also felt that India should be free, India should have equality. But of course, his vision of India was a little different than Mahatma Gandhi. So let us see what Dr. Ambedkar said in his concluding speech to the Constituent Assembly. On the 26th of January 1950, we are going to enter a life of contradictions. In politics, we will have equality and in social and economic life, we will have inequality. In politics, we will be recognizing the principle of one man, one vote and one vote, one value. In our social and economic life, we shall, by reason of our social and economic structure, continue to deny the principle of one man, one value. How long shall we continue to live this life of contradictions? How long shall we continue to deny equality in our social and economic life? If we continue to deny it for long, we will do so only by putting our political democracy in peril. Peril means in danger. So B. R. Ambedkar's view on equality was a little different because Ambedkar believed that although political equality has been given to the people of India through the constitution, but social and economic equality was yet to be realized by the people of India. That is why he asked these questions to the young minds of India and he also told India that if there is no equality, then our democracy will be in danger. Then let us move on to the first Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru. So Jawaharlal Nehru in the midnight of 5th August 1947 gave a speech to the Constituent Assembly. A speech about India's independence and a speech about the various values and the various um, objectives that the new India will have, will soldier as responsibility. Okay, so the famous speech made by Nehru was titled as Triest with Destiny. It was like a meeting with destiny. So I will not read out this because it's a bit long, but I'll tell you what he wants to convey or what he wanted to convey at that time through this. So Nehru said that at 12 o'clock midnight, when everybody sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. That means India will get freedom. It will become independent from the British colonial rule. So he says that it is a very historical moment because it's like an end of one age for India and it's like a new birth for this new democratic country. So that is why he promises the people that he will be in total dedication for the service of this nation and the people and also for the cause of humanity as a whole. He said that with freedom and with power comes responsibility and the responsibility rests with the constituent assembly who represents the common people of India. So Nehru also threw light on the pains of partition when the people's hearts were heavy due to the partition of India into two countries and this pain will always be there. It will never end. But we have to think about the future. The future is not very easy. We need to strive for perfection and we need to pledge that we will maintain democracy in the country. We will remove poverty and ignorance. We will remove diseases and inequality of opportunities and be together. And beyond all, he said that as long as there are tears and suffering, that means as long as we keep on remembering our past, our sufferings, so long our work will not be over. So he wanted India to be such a country which will move out of all its previous problems of poverty, ignorance, inequality, etc. and will long for a society which is full of happiness, full of rights for the Indian citizens. So students, when you read about these three great leaders of India, then I'm sure you understood what kind of values they wanted to incorporate, incorporate in us, isn't it? Now let us move on to the philosophy of the constitution. So when we talk about the philosophy of the constitution, by reading the constitution, then here we are actually pointing out to the preamble. So preamble is nothing but it is like a beginning to the constitution of India. All right. So the constitution of India begins with a very short statement, with a short introduction as to what the entire constitution is about. In short, 
The preamble is a short statement of its basic values and ideals. So the idea of a preamble in India was taken from the American constitution. So if you can see here, then we the people of United States, that means here the preamble of the United States have been highlighted and taking into consideration this preamble, our Indian leaders also took great inspiration and they came up with their own preamble. So let us read the preamble of our country and here already the main ideals or the main philosophy is uh, highlighted. So let's read it. We, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic, and to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic, and political, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith, and worship, equality of status and of opportunity, and to promote among them all fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation. In our Constituent Assembly, this 26th day of November, 1949, do hereby adopt, enact, and give to ourselves this constitution. So this is the preamble to the Indian constitution and if you read the preamble, you will understand what are the ideals that our constitution carries. So it's already marked in yellow if you can see. Now let me very briefly tell you about the meaning of these ideals. Alright, so let us begin with the phrase, we the people of India. So the preamble starts with the words, we the people of India, which means that this constitution has been brought up and enacted by the people through their representatives. That means whoever were responsible for making this constitution, they were representing the common people. Okay, and this constitution was not handed down to the common people by any king or by any colonial ruler. It was given to the people by the people whom they chose as their representatives. The next ideal is sovereign. Sovereign means that people are supreme in a democratic country. There is no country in the world who can come and dictate India, who can come and take away the freedom of India. Next is socialist. Socialist means that wealth or you know wealth or resources this should be generated socially that means people should have full faith in the government as far as wealth is concerned the government should own the land and all the industries or in short the entire economy of the country so that they can distribute distribute this wealth equally among the people of india Next is secular. Secular means citizens have the freedom to choose and follow any language they want. Sorry, not language, but religion they want. India does not support any official religion. All religions are equal in the eyes of law. Next is democratic. Democratic means a form of government where people enjoy great political rights. Everybody is equal. Okay, the government is also elected on the basis of people's choice. So this is democratic. Next is republic. Republic means whoever is the head of the state is an elected person. Nobody in India gets power due to its family background. Here if somebody gets power, then it is due to the choice of people. Justice. Justice means there cannot be discrimination in any ground, be it caste, be it race, be it religion, anything. Government has to work for the benefit and for the welfare of all the people and especially the government should work for the upliftment of the disadvantaged groups or the minority groups. Next is liberty. Liberty means freedom. Freedom means in India people are free to do whatever they want but with some reasonable restrictions. So some reasonable restrictions are always there so that people can enjoy their freedom and also let other people enjoy their freedom. But the government cannot take away the freedom of an individual totally. And even the individuals should very responsibly, very responsibly follow the liberty and let others follow it. Then equality. Equality means all are equal before law. There is no person who can be discriminated. 
and then comes fraternity the other word for fraternity is brotherhood so in the constitution it is told or it is appealed to all the people of india to live as a family nobody should treat a fellow citizen as inferior that means nobody should think that the other members of india are not a part of a family india is supposed to be united although they are all diverse and everybody should behave like a member of the same family forgetting all their inequalities and forgetting all their diversities so this is the underlying philosophy of the indian constitution which can be understood through these highlighted points to the preamble of the indian constitution so this brings us to study about the last topic of this chapter and um, that is institutional design so when we see a constitution then remember that this constitution is not only about the values and philosophies this constitution is about how these values are incorporated how these values are followed and how these values and ideals are structured in a proper institutional arrangement institutional arrangement means um, a kind of arrangement a kind of systematic arrangement through which people will be able to know who is to rule the country who is responsible for decision making who is uh, responsible for the various duties then what are the rights of the citizens etc so in order to make the constitution in order to make the proper arrangement of the institutions in the constitution it was very necessary to follow the philosophy that is written down in the preamble to the indian constitution so this document the entire fad book which we call as the constitution of india is all about the arrangements that our leaders made by keeping in mind the values so this document which we call as a constitution is very long and it is very detailed document if you compare the constitutions of for example usa and india then you will see that although the constitution of usa is older than that of india still it is not a very detailed one it is a very small one consisting of only 17 to 20 pages while india is a country which is having a big in fact the longest constitution so it is a long constitution because our constitution makers kept the provision for amending it if necessary amending means reforming it to keep it updated our constitution makers they felt that india with time will keep on changing it will move towards modernity it will move towards certain new ideologies it will move towards technological advancements etc the society will keep on reforming keeping in mind this thing our constituent assembly leaders they ensured that the various provisions of the constitution can be changed with the change of time with the need of people with the aspirations and goals of the people in the society so that is why there have been several amendments till date there have been several reforms or changes of the constitution till date according to the need of the common people so this provision shows us how far sighted our leaders were and indeed they gave us a document which is very much properly arranged and which is very much made keeping in mind the situation of the indians so just now i told you that there is a provision to change the constitution whenever required so this is called as constitutional amendment the various changes the reforms that are made in the constitution that is known as constitutional amendments which is very necessary so the constitution it tells us as to how our institutional arrangements are made and that too in a very legal language legal language means in a very technical language in a language which generally lawyers and people who are associated with law will understand that is why if you read the constitution of india perhaps for the first time you might not understand everything 
okay but whatsoever although the language may be a little difficult but you need to remember that the entire institutional design is not very difficult to understand our constitution very clearly lays down the procedure lays down the system for choosing the persons who are to govern the country that means we know how to choose our people we know that there will be elections after every five year and we know that we have the power to elect our leaders how do we know that we know that because this has been written down very clearly in the indian constitution our constitution also tells us who will have how much power to make what kind of decisions at the same time it also does not give the government full authority there are certain provisions in the constitution which puts some kind of limit to the government so that they can protect the rights of the citizens and they cannot become over powerful so this is how the institutional design of the constitution is made which is clearly written down everything is in details and if we keep on reading it then we are sure to understand it although it is written in a legal language so this is all about this chapter dear students we will learn about the various aspects of um, the constitutional provisions in this textbook itself and also some will be carried forward in class 10 so this is all about chapter number two constitutional design so we have come a long way students we started with the story of south africa with the struggle of south african people against the apartheid system we talked about the formation of the african national congress we talked about nelson mandela and we also talked about the way how they came out of the clutches of the white europeans and of their apartheid system we talked about how the south african constitution was made then we moved our attention to our own country and we talked about how the constitution of india was made who was responsible for making the indian constitution and slowly slowly we came to know the entire history behind which our constitution was made we then went on to understand the need of a constitution in a democratic country then we moved on to understand the underlying philosophy of the indian constitution first of all today we viewed the ideals the ideas of our leaders particularly the three leaders mahatma gandhi b r ambedkar and jawaharlal nehru and then we went on to understand the philosophy of the indian constitution by reading the preamble of our constitution and now just a few seconds back perhaps we talked about how systematically the institutional design of india has been made we talked about the kind of amendments the way amendments can be made in a constitution to suit the present time so studying about all these we have come to the end of today's chapter and this means that we have covered the syllabus for your pt1 because the pt1 in pt1 you need lesson number 1 and lesson number 2 so students um there are the textual questions now i'll be sharing a pdf with you so please go through the pdf you can do all these question answers um by looking at the pdf there is a picture question too you can do this on your own and as far as the other questions are concerned from question number 1 to 10 you can see it you can refer to the pdf for that so uh, question number 1 2 3 4 um 5 you can do in your um textbook and also um number 6 till number 6 you can do in your textbook and from number 7 to number 10 you can write down the answers in your copy by taking into consideration the pdf that i have shared below so students thank you so much i hope you all had a fruitful uh, first term this year with so much uh, experiments isn't it so thank you students for your cooperation study very well and um, also happy holidays